Hi kids, it's Miss Barbara again. We're here for another lesson today. We're gonna to do some learning and I have some fun things for you to do. I really miss you. I wanted to say hi to all of you. Hi Ainsley, hi Benjamin, hi Cade, hi Emery, hi Ivy, and hi Jack. I hope you all are doing great. I hope you're having fun at home and doing a lot of fun activities and some learning with your mom or dad um, online or just playing games and learning. I wanted to do some of the things we would do at school with you too. The first thing I wanna tell you is that if you were at school with me this week, we would be learning about fairy tales. And I think you guys have heard of a lot of fairy tales. Some of them are Cinderella, Snow White, Hansel and Gretel, The Three Little Pigs. Those are some fairy tales. And we would have lots of fun activities to do with those stories, which we can't do now that I'm here without you and you're at home. But on this video, I'm gonna read one of those for you each day for a while. And we're gonna talk about the story just a little bit. I'm gonna start with that today. And we're gonna start with the story of The Three Little Pigs. These books are really small because I couldn't get the ones from the library that I wanted because the library's closed. So I'm gonna let the video come in closer and look at the book and we'll read it and you'll be able to see the pictures a little bit. So this is the story of the three little pigs. There once were three little pigs who each decided to build himself a house. The first pig met a man with a bundle of straw. The pig asked for some straw and built his house from it. Soon a wolf came along and knocked on the door, saying, little pig, little pig, let me come in. The pig answered, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. So that big bad wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the straw house down. The little pig got away though and he ran to the second pig. The second pig met a man with a load of sticks. The pig decided to make his house out of sticks. Along came that wolf knocking on the door and saying, little pig, little pig, let me come in. But the second little pig said, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. So that big bad wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew that stick house down. And that little pig escaped too and ran off to the third pig friend. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks. He asked for some bricks and he built a sturdy little house. The wolf came knocking at his door saying, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the pig. The wolf huffed and he puffed. Oh, and he had to huff and puff some more. But he could not blow down the brick house. At last, he gave up all his huffing and puffing and said, Dear pig, come with me to Farmer Smith's turnip field. I happen to know it is full of nice fat turnips. I will come for you at six o'clock tomorrow. All right, agreed the little pig. But he got up at five o'clock and he went to Farmer Smith's and he gathered, gathered all the turnips he could carry. He was back home by six when the wolf arrived. The wolf was very angry to hear that he had been tricked, but he did not show it. Instead, he said, friend pig, I know of an apple tree just up the hill. I will come for you at five o'clock tomorrow morning and we'll go fetch apples. The little pig awoke at four o'clock and he hurried off to pick his apples, hoping to return before the wolf came. But this time, he had to climb a tree and the wolf came along before he could climb down. Good morning, pig, said the wolf licking his chops. 
I am pleased to find you here. Tell me, are the apples very good? Oh, let me throw you one, answered the pig, and he threw it as far as he could. When the wolf ran to get it, the pig jumped down and trotted away home. There, he made himself a delicious apple pie. The next day, the wolf was back. Charming pig, won't you come with me to the fair? He asked, I'll be here for you at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Why, I love fairs, said the pig, and the pig slipped out early and went to the fair himself. He had a fine time there, and he bought a nice new barrel for his rainwater. It's right here. On his way home with his new barrel, the little pig saw the wolf coming to meet him. The pig climbed inside the barrel to hide, and it rolled right down the hill. The sight of it frightened the wolf so, so much that he turned and ran. Later, the wolf came to the pig's house and told him of that strange sight, that barrel rolling toward him. The little pig laughed <laughs> and said it had only been a barrel and that he himself had been in it. Oh, the wolf did not like being laughed at. He climbed up on the roof and shouted down the chimney, Little pig, little pig, I'm coming in. At this, the little pig hung a big pot of water over the fire. When the wolf came down the chimney, he fell right into the boiling water. And that was the end of the big bad wolf. The end. So fairy tales are fun little stories that often could not be true, but they teach us about, oh, just lessons in life, like how to treat each other and how to be brave when you're scared. And they teach us about people and things that are good and those that are bad. So there's a lot of good reasons to have a good understanding of some fairy tales. Next, we're going to do our worksheets for today. So pull out your worksheets for today and you are going to be able to pause the video and do the work with me one at a time like we did last time and then restart it when you're ready. So this is our first worksheet. Please pause the video and put your name on top and start it again when you're done. Okay, this worksheet is about beginning sounds, the sound at the beginning of a word, and we wanna know what letter makes that sound. So our first picture is the picture of a pig, and pig says p -p -p pig at the beginning. It says p. Is that an S, an N, or a P? at the beginning of pig. You decide, pause the video, circle the one you think it is, and start it again when you're done. Okay, pig starts p -p -p with a P. The next picture is a dog. Dog, so listen to the beginning sound, d, d, dog. Does that start with a D? a G or a B. You decide, pause the video, circle the one you think, and start it again when you're ready. Okay, dog starts with D. Good. And the next picture is a rabbit. Rabbit says r, r, rabbit. At the beginning it says r, rabbit. So does that start with a T, an R, or an L? You decide, circle the one you think, pause the video, and start it again when you're done. Rabbit starts with R. Okay, the last picture is a horse. So it says horse at the beginning, and that starts with either H, 
S or M. So pause the video while you think about it and choose which letter says horse, circle it and start the video when you're ready. Okay, horse starts with H. Okay, turn it over. There's more on the other side. The next picture is a f f fish. It starts like f f f and says fish. Does that start with E or T <coughs> or F? Pause the video while you decide and circle the letter you think starts fish and start it up when you're ready. Okay, fish starts with F. Okay, the next picture is a house. Does house start with H or B or G? Pause the video while you decide and circle the right one and then start it again when you're ready. Okay, house starts with H. The next picture is a n nest. Nest it says n n at the beginning. Nest. Does that start with a U, an N, or an M? Pause the video. Think about what it starts with. Circle what you think and start it again when you're ready. Nest starts with N. The last picture is a sun. S sun. Does that start with S or P or D? Sun. Pause the video, circle what you think, and start it again when you're ready. Sun starts with S. Okay. Our next worksheet is about rhyming, and we're gonna talk about these pictures. But first, pause the video while you write your name on top and start it again when you're ready. Okay, so the pictures we have are a bee, a swing, and a sled. And they all rhyme with one of these over here. These pictures are bed, ring, and tree. So you decide what you think rhymes with B and draw a line from the B to one of those pictures, whichever one rhymes with B. And rhyming means it sounds the same. Sounds the same. So decide what rhymes with B and draw a line. Pause the video. Decide what you think and start it again when you're ready. Okay, what rhymes with B is tree. They sound the same, B, tree. Next is a swing. Decide what rhymes with swing and draw a line from the swing to the picture that rhymes with it. After you're done with that, Decide what rhymes with sled and draw a line to that from the sled to the one that rhymes. Pause the video and do both the swing and the sled and start it again when you're ready. Okay, swing rhymes with ring and sled rhymes with fed. All right, turn it over. We're gonna do rhyming words on this side. Over here we have man, bear, and bell. Over here we have chair, shell, and fan. You decide what rhymes with man and draw a line over to that picture. Pause the video now, draw the line for where it rhymes and start it again when you're ready. Okay, man rhymes with fan. Next, pick the rhyming word for bear and draw a line and the one for bell and draw a line there. 
pause the video, do both of those, and start it again when you're ready. Okay, bear rhymes with chair, and bell rhymes with shell. Okay, the next worksheet is different. So same is the opposite of different. We want to find in each row which one looks different. Not same, but different. So two of these are the same. One is different. We'll start that as soon as you pause the video and write your name on top and start it again when you're ready. Okay, so in the first row, look at all three of those and decide which one is different. Pause the video, circle the one that's different, and start it again when you're ready. Okay, this one is different. You see, these two look just the same. So we circle the one that's different. Go to this row, decide which one is different, circle only one, Pause the video while you circle it and start the video when you're ready. Okay, this one is different here. These two look just the same. This is the one that's different. All right, go to the next row. Look at all three, look at them carefully. Decide which one is different. Circle only the one that's different. Pause the video to do that and start it again when you're ready. All right, these three, this one is different. These two are just the same, but this one is different. Okay, last row, look at all three of those, decide which one is different, pause the video, circle that one, and start it again when you're ready. Okay, in this row, this one is different. These two are exactly the same. This is the one that's different. Turn it to the other side. We're gonna do something different here. We're gonna do counting, and we're going to circle in each box which number it was that we counted. In this box, there's one egg, so we circle the one. Over here, count these coins. We'll do this one together, and then you will circle which one of these numbers it is. So one, two, three, four. Remember, we always count across the row and then across the next row. So one, two, three, four. Circle which one is the four, pause the video, circle that one, and start it when you're ready. Okay, here's the four. On this box, these are little dolls, okay? We're gonna count them across the row and across this row. I'll count this one with you too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Circle the seven in here, whichever one is the seven, by pausing the video, circling it, and then start it again when you're ready. Okay, here's the seven and we counted seven dolls, and so we circle the seven. You try this one by yourself. These are two, li two <laughs> I just told you, two little towers. I counted that one with you, one, two. So pause the video, circle the two, and start it again when you're ready. Okay, here's the two. Now you try this one by yourself. These are bags of candy, I think. Count them across the top, then the middle, then the bottom. Pause the video to count them, and then pick which number it is and circle it, and then start it again when you're ready. Okay. Actually, these, it's called bird seed. It's not candy, little bags of bird seed. There are 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's the ten. Next, count the bowls across the top, then the middle, then the bottom. 
pause the video while you count, then circle which number it is, and then start the video when you're ready. Okay, there are eight bowls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next, count the balls. Pause the video, count how many there are, and circle which number it is, and then start the video when you're ready. Okay, there are three balls. One, two, three. Next, toothbrushes. Count the toothbrushes across the top and then the bottom. Pause the video while you do that and circle the number that it is and start the video when you're ready. Okay, there are five toothbrushes. One, two, three, four, five. Next, kites. Count the kites on the top row, then the bottom. Pause the video while you do that and circle how many kites you think there are. Nine, seven, or five. And start the video again when you're ready. There are nine kites. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, next, stars. Count the stars on the top row, then the bottom row. Pause the video while you do that and circle which number of stars there are. Six, eight, or four. Start the video when you're ready. Okay, there are six stars. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good job. All right, our last worksheet. We are trying to find hidden numbers in this picture. Some of them are kind of obvious and others are pretty hidden. We're gonna try to get the sheet out of the shadow for you if we can. There we go. Okay, so try to find the numbers, all the numbers between zero and nine. So that would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I'm gonna write those for you on the side here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, we're gonna look for those numbers in the picture. Well, I see the zero right here. I'm gonna help you with the first one. It's on this bucket turned sideways. Okay, so it's hidden by the bucket. I'm gonna help you with one more, which is the one. It's hidden right in here where the shovel is by the bucket. Here's the one right here. And here was the zero right here. So see if you can find, so we found that the one, I'll check that off, and I'm sorry, the zero and the one. See if you can find the rest of those numbers in this picture. Pause the video while you look for them and circle them all and start the video again when you're ready. Okay. Let's find the rest of those pictures. Let's see, the three is right here. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the two. The two is up in the air with the birdie. The three is down here with the shell. The four, so we did two, we did three. The four is on this sailboat. The five is on this, oh, it's like a big wooden something that that bird is on. That's the five. The six is down here on this shell. The seven is tricky. It's on this boat. It's right here. I should show you this six is kind of hidden. It's right in here. 
Okay, so that's the seven. The eight is over here. I'm not even really sure what that is. It's, a, it's the sun and, and something else in the water. So there's the eight. And the nine is over here, this little nine right here. So those are all the hidden numbers in that picture. Okay, good work. That's it for our worksheets today. Oh no, 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 no. There's one on the back of this one, I forgot. The last one is um, a picture of these little worms popping up from the ground. And we wanna know how many are, how many worms we have peeking up from the ground. We're going to color the head and the tail of each worm the same color. And then we're going to choose a different color for the next worm so that we can count them all differently if they have a different color. So let me show you what I mean. Here's a worm's head and a worm's tail. So I'll color the worm's head and I'll color the worm's tail just quickly. That's one worm. And then I put the blue aside and I'll get a new color and I'll color another worm that goes together a head and a tail. Here's one here. I'll start with this guy over here. Here's a head. And it could be this tail or this one. Doesn't matter. I'll do this tail. So that's another worm. And I'm going to pick different colors for all these worms. I'm going to need six, seven, 11 crayons of different colors if you can find that. You could put, you could do the same color for a couple of them if they're not right next to each other. You can see one more, I'll do one more down at the bottom. It shows you the one at the bottom where his head is peeking up from the ground and his tail is peeking up from the ground. So here's one worm, here's one, here's one, and there's a lot of other worms in here. I want you to get your crayons out, pause the video, and color each worm the same color for his head and his tail and see how many you count when you're done. Pause the video and start it again when you're ready. Okay, I'm gonna color a few more worms really quick so that you can see mine and see if you got the same number I did. This might be my last color in this box. I only have, I think, eight different colors. So I'll use a couple of my colors twice. Maybe you have more crayons there. one here. So I'm going to count my worms and see if you counted the same number I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I got eleven worms and we write an eleven with a one, one. That's how many worms we counted on that sheet. Okay, now we're done with worksheets. We're gonna go back down to the floor and I'm going to do a math activity with you. First of all, I forgot I wanted to show you guys this very nice picture that Benjamin made me. They were painting with forks. And so he painted, he put the fork in the paint colors and made flowers on the picture and then drew stems, and I love it. And on the back it says, I love you, Miss Barbara, Benjamin. Thank you, Benjamin, I love it, and I have it up in my room, my, my preschool room. Thank you for giving me that. Okay, 
I'm gonna get my yellow board out to do a math activity with you. This is from our book called Match It Mathematics. And so while we're, what we're gonna do here is set out some pictures that have, or some cards that have pictures on them. And these will be a number of objects on each card and the number cards are over here. And we're gonna count each card, you're going to count each card and find the number puzzle piece that goes with it and we'll put the puzzles together. So the first one I want you to try is, let's see, let's try the cars first. You count these cars, pause the video while you count them. Well, I'll count the first one with you. And then you're gonna do the next ones and put the pieces together. We count across the top and across the bottom if we can. We can for the cars. So we would count one, two, three, four. So I pick this up and I come over here and I find the number four, which is here, and I put it together. The puzzle goes together. Okay, so next, I want you to count the butterflies next. So pause the video while you count the butterflies and find the card over here that has that number and point to both of them and we'll start the video when you're ready. Okay, so the butterflies, one, two, three, four, five. The number five here, we bring it over and we put them together like that. Okay, next, you pause the video while you count the number of rainbows. Start it again when you've counted the rainbows and you have found which card over here goes with the rainbows. Okay, so the rainbows, one, two, three, four, five, six. The number six is right here. So we put that together down there. Okay, next I want you to count the strawberries. Pause the video while you count the strawberries and find the card that goes with it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's hard to count a lot of things when they're not in a row, but we counted nine, and the number over here, nine, is, can you point to it? Here it is. Good job. Okay. Next, count the ice creams, the ice cream cones. Pause the video while you count the ice creams and find the number that goes with the ice creams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the number seven is, you see it? Here it is. Okay. Next, count the umbrellas. Pause the video while you count the umbrellas and find the number that goes with them. Okay, the umbrellas. One, two, three. The number three is here. Put it together when you find it. All right, next, count the fish. That's pretty easy. You can tell by looking. There are two fish. One, two. Finding the number two. We put that one together. Next, count the birds. All right. Pause the video while you count them and then start it up again when you've done that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
find the eight to put with your birds. Here it is. Okay, count the paint brushes. Pause the video while you count them and then find the number that it is over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The number ten is here. And the last one is, oh, a really cute teddy bear. One, right? That one was easy. Okay. The last thing I want to do after I've picked up these is I want to talk to you about Easter. So Easter is coming up this weekend in one more week and we were going to do an Easter craft at school that you are going to get to do at home. I'll explain the craft to you in a minute but I want to read the story of Easter to you first and then I'll explain the craft that you're going to get to do at home. So. Here we go. There's a good reason why we think about eggs at Easter. Because they help us think about new life. They don't. They do, right? Eggs are what some animals are born in, and so that's their new life. They come out of an egg. Sometimes new life comes out of an egg, like this, a brand new baby chick. On Easter, we remember some promises Jesus made to us. Here's a story about the Easter promises. After Jesus died on the cross, his friends put his body in a tomb that had a huge rock for a door. So here's a tomb, it's, it's like a cave, and this big rock would go in front of this doorway, and that would be like a, a door for the cave. After they did this, they thought, Jesus is gone forever. But three days later, Jesus' friend, Mary Magdalene, went to visit the tomb and found a strange thing. The rock door had been opened. Mary ran to get two of the disciples. They came back with her and looked inside the tomb. After they saw that Jesus, oh, and they saw that Jesus' body was gone. Well, Jesus said he would rise to life after three days, they said. Could it be true? They went home to think about it. Mary Magdalene stayed outside of the tomb and cried because she missed Jesus so much. All of a sudden, Mary Magdalene heard a little rustling behind her. When she turned around, a man was standing there. Who are you looking for? The man asked. Mary. She knew that voice. Mary wiped the tears from her eyes and said, Jesus. And then Jesus told her, go and tell my friends that I have risen to new life, like I promised. Mary ran all the way to tell the disciples. At first, they didn't believe her. But then they said, Jesus made us a promise. He said he would rise to new life so he could go and prepare a place for us in heaven. Jesus wouldn't break a promise. Later, when the disciples had gathered together, Jesus came to them and made another promise. He said, I will be with you always. And these are the promises that Jesus makes for us too, that, he, that we will have new life and that he will be with us forever. And these are the promises we celebrate at Easter time. We have not had a chance to read this story more than once like we would normally do if you were here at school with me and I can explain it a little more. I will read it one more time on another day and, and help you understand the story a little more. But I wanted to show you the craft that you're going to make at home. This is the one that Joey made when he was little. And I'm going to have you look for the colored sheet that I've given you where um, I have painted on the sheet for you with pretty watercolors. And you turn it over to the back and you'll see egg shapes 
that you can cut out. And when you cut out all those eggs, you will put them on your large piece of paper and glue them on. And it'll be just a, a bunch of pretty eggs in the middle. And then you're going to write Easter promises new life. And you will see that packet with your, with your supplies to cut your eggs out, glue them on your large sheet of white paper, and then take a nice marker or pen or crayon and write the words that I've shown you how to write also, Easter promises new life. And when you're done, I will see whether I can pick it back up from you and laminate it for you. I'm not sure if that'll work right now. We'll try because then you can use it as a placemat because it's got this shiny laminate on here and you'll be able to take it to the table and put it down at your place and use it as a placemat for yourself. So that's the one Joey made. Yours is going to look great too when you're done. I would love to see a picture of it when you're done and see whether I can laminate it for you. Make sure you put your name on the back when you're done, okay? So that's it for today. Thanks for learning with me today. I miss you. I hope you're all doing great, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.